Hi and welcome to my video on salt marsh formation. The example you can see in front of you there in the photograph is one on the North Norfolk coast uh, at Blakeney. For a salt marsh to form you really need a low energy environment where there's quite a lot of shelter from the wind and the waves. It might be that this happens because you have a depositional landform like a spit which can help provide this shelter. For a salt marsh to form you need a large input of sediment which can arrive from the sea and rivers. And the most likely place along a coastline where you're going to get this sort of sediment input is near a tidal flat. Now the tidal flat has a low gradient which means that any rivers that flow into it will quite quickly deposit any sediment they're transporting. As the mud starts to accumulate in a process that we call coastal accretion, this reduces the length of tidal flooding and it allows a small selection of plants to grow on the salt marsh. And channels are cut by the receding water at low tide. You can see a channel there on the diagram which will be really mean cut by the, by the water at low tide. The plants that start to colonise, we call pioneer plants, these are the first ones to come onto the marsh. They like to be things like glasswort, which looks like that, and you've got things like cord grass, otherwise known as spartina. Now these things, they love salt, uh, what we call halophytic, and basically are capable of staying underwater for several hours a day. More plants will start to colonise the marsh as time goes on, higher up the marsh as more sediment is able to be trapped there. It's the long blades of the cord grass that, that help to do this because they uh, basically trap sediment that's too fine to settle out of water in a salt marsh. And the roots help to stabilise sediment that's already been deposited, helping this process that we call coastal accretion. So you might get species such as managrass and sea purslane and later on perhaps red fescue and maybe sea rush. And as the mud deepens further the marsh is slowly growing with more and more plants colonising until it's largely covered with vegetation and it's only the highest tides that will now cover the whole marsh. And you can get erosion along those channels that were cut um, and it could cause bank collapse and, and maybe a salt pan might form. Other plants such as sea lavender and sea thrift may colonise the marsh and these will be much higher up and further away from the sea. So here's a kind of a diagram of a fully developed salt marsh and as you can see at the back there you might get some moisture tolerant trees. Maybe your things like your ash and your alder to, uh, to form. Now this whole process of succession is called halosea. So the whole thing is called halosea, the kind of succession of, of building up the, the, the salt marsh in this way. Hopefully if you enjoy the video, thanks for watching, hope you've learned something, see you next time.